Welcome to 25 Backstory. I'm Rondell Joseph. She's a woman who survived struggling ratings at a station, but she says changing the viewers' habits and opinions can be difficult. I sit down with Brookstone Capital Management's Director of Communications and former CBS2 morning anchor Aaron Kennedy, who talks about the start, what brought 10 minutes of nonstop news into the picture, and the volatility of the television news business. Take a look did watch you for your six years and one week at CBS2 Chicago. I did the counting. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yes. So tell me, Erin, what was it that sparked your interest into the broadcasting business? You know, it's a great question because I never had any desire to be in the industry at all. Um, in fact, I thought that it was a little bit vain because my dad, when I was in... Um, was it college or high school? He brought it up and I said, no, no, that's not for me. And then it was the summer, summer after my junior year of college, I fell into an internship at KCNC in Denver, which is where I lived in Colorado. And the first day out with a reporter, I loved it. And I knew that it was what I wanted to do. So I'm so grateful for that internship because otherwise I never thought I would do it. But I had a great internship in Denver. And then I went into my senior year at Notre Dame and had an internship with the NBC station there, WNDU, put together my VHS tape at that point and sent it to 19 small markets and ended up accepting a job in Lubbock, Texas. Okay, so you were in Texas, you've done, you've, you've worked pretty much in Texas, you've worked in Providence, you've worked in Cincinnati. Um, Cleveland, yeah. Oh, Cleveland, yeah, I stand corrected. Yes, yeah, no problem. <laughs> yeah, so I... I've got a whole lot of some of the uh, your past work. Of course, you've worked alongside Chris Ty, who was also WBBM. You at least got to anchor with him one time before you left while you were at uh, BBM. You did your research, Rondell. Yeah. Yes. Rondell Joseph has done his research. <laughs> so you were at CBS2, of course, for six years. What was it like being one of the long-running morning anchors? Um, you know, it's great to be in a market for that long. It's also rare just because not only is the TV industry very volatile, but a lot of people have goals to either go to the market where they grew up or, you know, things are just changing all the time. So to have been there for six years was really special. It was where I had two of my three children. Um, so I really felt like I was invested in the community and the people. And by the end of six years, I felt like I knew every person at City Hall and you feel like you had a real institutional knowledge for Chicago, which is just such a vibrant and exciting city. Now, out of all of your five co-anchors, who did you enjoy co-anchoring the most with during your six-year tenure? <laughs> because, like, there were so many people. You had Chris Gutierrez as a start, then Lionel Moyes, then Marissa, of course, Mike, who had done intern for about six months, and Ryan, and you always had such a positive vibe. Everyone was like, how many, how is it she surviving out of having six, almost five co-anchors? Wow, but yes. Um, first of all, I think that after you stay in TV for long enough, you are with people who truly love what they're doing because it really is such a hard industry, especially in the beginning. And so I think for people who stick it out, it's because every day you wake up and you are happy to go into work and you love it. So that being said, generally the people from, you know, behind the scenes to in front of the camera to the producers and everybody in between is very good and really enjoys it. So to be honest, I am in close touch with all of them, all of my co-anchors um, and some of whom are still in the industry and some of whom aren't, but it was, it really was a pleasure working with each one of them. You know, I would tell you this. I think you surpassed Roseanne Tejas on the morning seat. I think you did. Yeah, you know, but so Roseanne is such a wonderful, A, just a wonderful human being um, and such a talent. And she would be a common fill-in too. And I always looked forward to the mornings where I got to work with Roseanne because she, like I said, it's just a beautiful spirit. So I am so happy to see that she is still, you know, doing well at Fox Chicago now. Um, and I wish her nothing but the best because for a woman to have that kind of longevity in the industry is difficult, but it speaks to her talent. And then just again, the fact that she's a good human being. 
I've, and I grew up watching Roseanne. I started. I remember watching her back when she was at WGN. It was so right. many years ago. Her, uh, Dana Kozlov, Joni Lum, who was also at Fox Chicago, who also worked at uh, CBS too back in the early two thousands. So let's jump to my next question. This is one of my. This is one of the questions I actually have a. I always wondered about because I loved the segment. What was it that brought ten minutes of nonstop news? in the last block of that newscast every morning for the last two years now? So just to state the obvious, CBS Chicago is always last or second to last place, kind of across the board. Um, and of course it's difficult because I felt like we were putting on a very good product, but you know, people, who our viewers in Chicago are just kind of set in their ways. They watch what their parents watched and their grandparents watched, and that's fine. And changing opinions is difficult. But what we realized was that people kind of wanted a recap within the last 10 minutes before it segged into CBS This Morning. And so I really enjoyed it because I think that it was a, a, a just for my husband, who was a viewer, to be able to just catch almost the last 10 minutes because let's be honest, waking up before seven is difficult anyway. Keep in mind, I woke up at two every morning, but waking up at seven is still hard. So to be able to get up at 6.50, catch all the local headlines essentially, and then bridge into CBS this morning, I think was a really good decision as far as producing the show went. Um, that being said, it was still hard to get the viewers that were never there. You know, when I watched like, I know, like, the first eight months of it, it just, like, I felt like it was a little generic, but when, I guess, that touch-up with the Enforcer package, it really brought up a little more of a tempo for it. You know, you, Ryan, Adrena, Muga Adigwe, of course, Eric Cox, who I know is doing pretty well outside of the business now. It just, like, it really brought a real, I would say it brought, it brought more of a real threat. So you were trying to you were trying to step up, make it worth watching, and of course, let me not forget Yasmin Hassan, who also left just what six months ago. You all did a good job, and no one like I know not really not many people watch CBS too, especially since it's been trying to recover for almost three decades after taking that downward turn after losing to ABC Seven back in the eighties. Yes. No, it's um, it's been an uphill battle for quite a while. And that's, again, kind of the nature of the beast with being in TV. You can be doing a great job. Your coworkers can be doing a great job. And at the end of the day, sometimes it doesn't matter. And it's very frustrating. It is. And of course, watching CBS 2 over the years, um, you probably watched some of my previous interview subjects, Diane Burns, one of one of the previous CBS two anchors back in the early 2000s who came over from WLS, Rob Johnson was another one as well. Those two were two of many who had, who stayed and tried to survive for so long. I'm surprised Rob Johnson survived through several co-anchors during his 12 years there. Right. I'm surprised completely. Yeah, but now, hold on real quick, sorry. I have my space heater on because it's freezing in here. Um, Rob is now also out of the industry, though, and doing very well. Um, Kate Sullivan, one of his former co-anchors, also out and doing very well. So it's just, it's interesting now to look at it kind of from an outside perspective um, and see people who have found success outside the industry. I feel like I always knew my time in TV would be finite. Um, it just happened a little bit sooner than I had thought, but that being said, I'm glad I got out when I did. Let's switch gears, Erin. So if you ever had the chance to co-anchor with someone you always dreamed of co-anchoring with, who would it be and why? That's a great question. Hmm. You know, there's a lot of people who I think do a great job, but I don't know that I would necessarily want to co-anchor with them. So I, that's a tough question. Um, you know, I always really enjoyed working with Chris Ty. Uh, it would be, he's just somebody who you would want to sit down and have a cup of coffee with anyway, you know? And I can say that for most of the people I worked with. Um, but gee, I don't know. 
I think Gail King would be a fun person to sit beside because I think she has such a great presence and just is so natural. You know, I feel like listening to her interview people, it's, it's the same questions, not only that I have, but she just reminds me of one of my aunts, right? You just like her. She's smart. She gets it. And she asks what everybody's thinking. Mm, you know, I, I often watch CBS mornings when I get the chance to, because my, my sleep schedule now as a college student, it's so irrelevant. <laughs> Cause I like in high school, I was getting up probably around like maybe what, four thirty five o'clock in the morning. Cause I'm biking from biking from my place to school, which is maybe three or four miles. That was the life I dealt with, but yeah, this is, well, it's a young man's game. So good for you. Yeah, and coming back later in the day, doing six and ten o'clock newscasts, sleep schedule, all over the place. So <laughs> it's so tough. It is so tough. Yeah, and I've done mornings maybe once or twice in life. I don't know if I can do it again, but it'd be worth it if I do. <laughs> well, I think what's the only benefit to working mornings is when you start to have kids. Then at least you're kind of on their schedule because. Being mornings, at least you're done at noon, so that, yes, you miss them having breakfast and getting ready and going to school, but you're home for them when they come home in the afternoons. If you work night side, which is when you know you go in at like 2 p.m., then all you have is breakfast with them, period. That's it, you know? So it's as people start having kids, generally they switch to mornings, um, but then, of course, you are compromising your sleep and many other quality of life components. So it's tough either way. It's not, it's never bankers hours. Yeah. I've always like, I always ask myself, how do people do it? Trying to get up at two in the morning just to get in to the station by 3 a.m. Have a newscast started by 4.30, maybe 5 a.m. <laughs> oh man. I will I mm-hmm. So do you have any advice for future journalists, despite how much the broadcasting industry is changing? Um, you know, that is also a tough question because I think journalism, and I say journalism with a capital J, is so important. And people who have institutional knowledge of the places where they're reporting is also so very important. Mm -hmm. But I think both of those are becoming more rare. So, you know, I don't know. It's just so hard. The industry itself is so hard, I think, and getting harder. So I think that it's important to, you know, obviously do what you love. And people, I think, who are in journalism love it. Um, so as long as you are always have a desire to always be learning, innate curiosity, enjoy meeting new people, learning new things, I think that's really all you need to be a good journalist. You will go far with those skills. Um, as far as advice though, you know, it's tough. You have to do a lot more with less these days. So realizing that if this is a profession that, you know, you choose to pursue, um, I think it's just going to get harder and harder. And hopefully that means that maybe there will be some breakout where there's a different, method to kind of report. And I think that that is what's great about the internet, right? I mean, we all can be reporters if we want to. That being said, you know, real journalism is still different than that. But I think that you just kind of have to realize that the industry is changing and you got to change with it, be flexible, but keep doing what you love. Yeah. yeah. And I've been in the business pretty long time. 25 has been my main spot, my main space. Of course, we didn't start doing backstory until maybe what, five months ago. So this has been more of a change for me to step out of my comfort zone, interviewing former journalists. And this is where I get to have my fun, be yeah, and have a few laughs and <laughs> try not to get snatched up in the process. <laughs> well, and that's the half of it. You got to do what you enjoy. Clearly you enjoy doing this. So yes. wonderful. keep doing it. Yes. Yeah. Ariel, is this, this is what I would call my best my finest hour. Let's just say that. <laughs> That's great. Well, I'm happy to be a part of it. Yes. Thank you so much, Karen. Let me, let me, this is going to be one of the funny, let me get the funny moment stories you've got in news. Funny story moments. Oh my goodness. I would, that would take all day. Um, I think what people maybe generally realize is 
that when you do have a co-anchor and team with whom you really get along well, it's just so much fun. And what goes on during the commercial breaks is a lot of joking and, you know, sharing funny stories. And I mean, just being that live TV is what it is. Everybody has a million and one hilarious stories. Um, you know, I had everything from reporting outside to getting like a moth stuck in my hair. And I am definitely afraid of moths. Um, wow. you know, of course there's always some moments where you just can't keep it together and everybody's laughing and it turns into these SNL moments almost, but no, everybody has tons of bloopers and thank goodness when I was first in the industry, it was, it wasn't like easy to record a newscast. Otherwise I think that I would probably have had some moments that lived on in infamy forever. <laughs> so knock on wood, that didn't happen to me. <laughs> Honestly, I think one time. I had a fly stuck in my hair. Like the night after the vice president's debate, I'm on the air, a fly just like runs through my hair. I'm like, oh no, 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 please don't tell me, please don't tell me. Right after we went into break, I'm like, no, 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 no. It's the <laughs> yep. Yeah. It off like it's no big deal, yep. Yeah, I like, cause that whole week, we had a whole comedy block. I don't know what happened. I think what, that Tuesday night, we were talking about um, actors uh, kissing mannequins to promote the social distancing in COVID. Mm -hmm. Wednesday, we were talking about um, police correction officers uh, torturing inmates with Baby Shark. That whole week, I could not take it seriously. That I think I might have, I might have almost lost my job that week. But <laughs> sometimes when it happens like that, yeah, it's just something in the water. Yeah, my co-anchor looked at me like, oh no, Rondell, please don't hold it together. We couldn't hold it together. <laughs> yes. I laugh, <laughs> cry sometimes. I almost laughed. Like, I laughed to a point where I nearly cry in this business. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. don't, don't let it happen. Don't let it happen. <laughs> right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Aaron, thank you so much for sitting down with me for 25 Backstory. It was an honor to have you on. Continue to be you. Um, of course, Brookstone is basically lucky to have you. Thank you. I feel very lucky to be working with them, too. I appreciate that. Yes, I will keep in touch with you, of course. Thank you so much. Thank you. Best of luck to you, Lai. I look forward to watching more stories on the 25 Backstory. Thank you so much. And, of course, you can also catch the outside of Backstory, RTA 25 News. Thank you. Thanks, Brenda. All right. Have a great Friday.